This is on the optimization based Class F power amplifier for GSM systems. And it's being presented by Nabil Abdul Jabbar, a research student within the School of Engineering and Informatics. He's working within the research group of radio frequency and antennae, the School of Electrical Engineering and Computer Sciences, and has done since June 2014. His study is partly supported by the University of Moselle under a joint collaboration program. He's contributed several international journal articles and conference papers, and his research focus includes, amongst other things, linear and nonlinear amplifiers, RF filters, and antennas. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Uh, hi, good afternoon. Uh, this is the last session. I know you are exhausted, so I, I'll not take a time. It's just one hour. I'm going to finish everything. <laughs> so excuse me if I slipped in, in this presentation. I'm also exhausted. Anyway, uh, the presentation is going to be for the Class F power amplifier. Uh, you know, uh, how can we uh, change uh, the things? Like this one? This one? Direct to her? Anyway, okay. Yeah, we're going to talk. Uh, we have a summary switching uh, mode amplifier. We're going to talk about the switching mode amplifier, which is the uh, class amplifier. Class amplifier is one of the kinds of switching mode amplifier, one of the types. And also, we are discussing here the class F amplifier with GSM system. Uh, we've got methodology, experiment, setup and simulation, we're going to uh, discover the simulation and results. And in the end, we're going to talk about conclusions. Uh, switching mode amplifiers. Uh, really, in general, uh, the amplifier, it's a critical uh, stage uh, in the communication system because it's uh, identify the amplification uh, stages and the complexity of the circuits. So, uh, so it's identify the uh, production costs, of course, and uh, also the uh, it's identify the accuracy of data transmission. The, though we have uh, we have to get a high f uh, high efficiency and also uh, higher linearity to uh, make a good uh, uh, transmission for data and accuracy accuracy in uh, transmission in data really. The switching mode amplifier is, uh, is different from the traditional one, uh, traditional types of amplifiers, uh, which is like class A, B, and A, B. Uh, these are depending on uh, uh, a method called switching modes. So uh, they are three types, D and E and F. Each type has its advantage and disadvantages well, we're going to talk about uh, the uh, disadvantages about uh, class D and uh, E. The problem with class D and E, really, the, uh, you see the capacitors, those capacitors, it's make a limitation for the amplifier to work with higher frequencies. And uh, it's really switching, pure switching amplifiers, so, so it's going to... Uh, switch very high, uh, in very high uh, uh, speed and uh, the number of switching uh, is very high so it's going to exhaust the amplifier if, you want, if you'd like to work with higher frequencies. But according to class F amplifier, uh, which is attract researchers because of its high uh, efficiency and high output power, and it's work with higher frequencies also. Uh, it's depend on uh, some methods. Uh, basically, it's two methods. The methods are the wave shaping signal, which is basically there are two methods. Uh, the wave shaping signal, you can use the filter uh, wave shaping method, or, uh, or you can use the uh, matching with the harmonics uh, wave shaping methods. Which is which gonna make the switching for the amplifier less than the other amplifiers, 
because it's going to work for one round, like 180 degree, one pi on, and another one, uh, uh, pi 180 degree off. So the switching is, is less than the other amplifiers. Yeah, this is the uh, advantages and disadvantages of the class F amplifier. The advantages of it, as I mentioned, is the high efficiency and also the high output power and low maximum drain voltage. That means it's no need for uh, the transistor to tolerate high voltages. So that uh, uh, make the transistor is not exhausted or uh, give it long lasting time. And also the wide range of frequencies Work, you, you can, you can uh, uh, design it to work with wide range of frequencies uh, because it doesn't depend on switching, but it depends on filter or matching, as I mentioned. So, and also the wave uh, shape, uh, shaping for voltage and current waves, uh, irrespective of transistor switching, this is increased the long lasting for the transistor. Uh, this is as much as, as the complexity. The complexity of the matching circuit or the complexity of, of the filter. If you want to go uh, for higher efficiency, uh, you're gonna take the, uh, uh, you're gonna, uh, you have to make more complex uh, filters or matching circuits. Uh, and also the efficiency is affected by the paroxysmic uh, capacitors like CDS. Uh, this uh, parasitic capacitors is going to be like short circuit uh, in the higher frequencies. So if you'd like to use more numbers of, of filters, which are going to be also complex, uh, but anyway, this, however, this, this uh, CDS is going to be like short circuit in the high frequency, which make the filters, which is used to uh, make the wave shaping signal, uh, waves, uh, going to make it uh, use this because it's short circuit. Class F amplifier with GSM. Uh, we've studied here the class F amplifier. We designed it according to the uh, Europe standard GSM. Uh, so, which is the power added efficiency is supposed to be more than uh, fifty percent, and uh, the uh, upper power is supposed to be. Uh, more than 26 dBm, and the input power less than 15 dB. So, and we take the, the consideration, the linearity, and also the high efficiency. We have to get <coughs> high efficiency and constant gain. Uh, the high efficiency is depend on the, on the odd and even harmonics that you uh, take it uh, to. Uh, make the wave shape uh, of the current and voltage. And also, uh, we have to get a constant gain. And uh, uh, this co uh, constant gain uh, is give us, as long as the constant gain, the gain be constant with wide range of, of uh, um, auto power, is going to be uh, enhance the uh, dynamic range. It's going to be, the dynamic range is going to be higher and also decrease the uh, power consumption, of course. And uh, the output power. The output power is, uh, uh, is one of the standards uh, that we have to take it in account, uh, as I mentioned in the, uh, about the standards of the Europe standards GSM, it's supposed to be higher than 26 dBm. So we need to find the, uh, the first stage that we, we used it, uh, we've done it, we, make the, we made the, uh, uh, the uh, biasing for the circuit, which is class B amplifier. And after that, we have to find the output impedance and uh, uh, the, the optimum impedance to achieve the uh, operation conditions. So we need to get the optimum impedance to uh, to uh, get those conditions, which they are, uh, the uh, identify the 
the, out, uh, the optimum input power, which is supposed to be less than 15, as I mentioned, and maximum output power, which is the, uh, has to be more than 26, and uh, super oper uh, suitable operation efficiency, which is supposed to be higher than 50%, as long as we get more, as long as, we, as our design is better. And also the real part of the Z input and Z output supposed to be uh, uh, higher than zero that to get uh, the uh, stability, to achieve stability for the amplifier. And also uh, we put this condition, uh, GP plus GT, the, uh, uh, process, uh, the gain uh, pr uh, processing uh, minus the total gain supposed to be less than 1 dB. All of them, those, we put them in the uh, ADS program and uh, we put them as conditions and uh, we make the Z in and Z out uh, as a variable. So at that time, we run the program and we've got Z in and Z on we, and we, we put Z in and Z out, the real part of them condition uh, higher than zero to uh, guarantee the stability for the circuit. So uh, these conditions, uh, we've used also uh, in the uh, ADS, the gradient uh, algorithm to achieve these goals and uh, uh, put these conditions in it. The wave shaping, as I mentioned, there's two kinds of wave shaping uh, methods. The wave shaping methods, they are the filter or the harmonics uh, matchings. In this, uh, in this uh, work, we've used the uh, wave shaping using uh, the filter because we don't use it. Uh, we don't need it to, to uh, use the matching uh, method because the matching method, it's used usually with the uh, non-constant envelope uh, like CDMA. But as GSM, it's constant envelope, so you don't need you don't need that much efficiency or linearity. So we've used the uh, filter method. And also one of the features of the filter method, it's, uh, it's give you maximum amplitude of the fundamental uh, frequency. So if you, if you tuned uh, the, ampl uh, the filter, the resonator, uh, and give us the maximum amplitude for uh, the fundamental frequency. And we've used here a low-pass filter, Chebyshev, which is uh, why used it uh, as a low-pass filter because we'd like to take the harmonics from the fifth-order harmonics down to the first harmonic, uh, which is the fundamental frequency. So we've we we use the odd harmonics to make the uh, the wave shaping for current wave, and we use the uh, uh, the odd harmonic for, uh, for the voltage wave shaping and the uh, even harmonic to make the current wave in the uh, wave shaping signal. So uh, we've used that, that uh, the filter, uh, of course the more harmonic you get, the more efficiency you, you, the more harmonic you take, the more efficiency you get, because the more harmonic you take, the wave shape of the current and voltage <coughs> is going to be smoother and closer to uh, its uh, shape is supposed to be, because there is uh, the current wave supposed to be half sinusoid, half semi-sinusoidal uh, wave, and the voltage wave supposed to be square wave, and there's shift uh, 180 degree between them to uh, uh, to prevent the uh, interconnection between, or to prevent the uh, the interrupt between them, the interconnection between them, and that be, can be achieved by using class B amplifier, which give you just the angle, the conducting angle, uh, just uh, one hundred eighty degree, and uh, also it depends on the quality of the filter as much as. It's, uh, uh, it has high quality. It's going to be, uh, it's going to make an isolation between the uh, voltage wave and the current wave. So, uh, and as I mentioned, the more harmonics you take, the more efficiency you achieve. 
But on another hand, uh, the more harmonic you take, the more complexity you, you're going to get. Because if, you, if you'd like to, uh, to get more harmonics, uh, frequencies, you have to take, uh, you have to make the filter more complex and you have to take more, more numbers of filters that make the circuits more complex, which is uh, affect the cost of projection. And also, there's uh, something called maximally flat waveform. The researcher, they are taking care <coughs> of it. They, they found that the, uh, they need to, to get less uh, to to make less uh, uh, complex uh, circuit with higher frequency uh, high efficiency with higher efficiency and higher output power so it's it's called maximally flat waveform so and also there is another thing uh, effect on that which is cds however if you take a higher number of fl uh, filters and uh, you make the your uh, circuits uh, more complex, but there's something called the the capacitance capacitance uh, capacitors, and also the uh, like CDS. It's become, as I mentioned, it's become like a uh, short circuit in higher frequency, which is make the filter, which is complex, useless. So the uh, this filter uh, circuit, just like the uh, low pass filter. Chip achieve. You've used that quarter wavelength as uh, a path for uh, for the ground to uh, guarantee to make a ground uh, path for uh, uh, path to the ground for the even uh, harmonics frequencies to make uh, the voltage wave signal. So and also we found the optimum and uh, the op uh, the optimum input and output impedance. The optimum input and output impedance, uh, which is the output impedance of the amplifier at the output uh, of the transistor with the sh wave shaping signal, we found it, and also with the uh, the input uh, impedance of the transistor and the input. Uh, why we found we found it. That help us to make the matching circuit with the 50 ohms with the two, with the two sides, output and output. So we found these, and after that, we make the uh, uh, the matching circuit, uh, circuit according to those uh, two uh, impedance in the input and the output. But how we find this uh, to uh, the optimum value of the input and output impedance? We've used <coughs> Sorry, we've used the uh, optimization, the gradient method optimization of the ADS, and we take in consideration these conditions, uh, which is the power added efficiency, and the power output, and the uh, power input, and uh, the power added efficiency is supposed to be. We put uh, these conditions in the program. So we put power added efficiency more than 50%, and also the power output. Uh, put it has to be uh, more than 26 dB and the input power less than 15 dB, which is the standard of GSM of the Europe standards. And also, we made another condition, as I mentioned, the real part of it in and it uh, out of the transistor, we made them more than zero. That's for stability. And also, uh, the uh, VGS, we made it in range between minus three and minus two for the transistor to work in class B. As I mentioned, we need to get the uh, uh, angle, conducting angle, uh, 180 degree. And also we put that condition, which is GP minus GT, supposed to be uh, less than one dB. That's give us uh, a good uh, matching. That's, that's a uh, guarantee that the uh, power delivered maximum power delivered from the input to the output. So, and after that, we work with, after finding the input and output, the optimum input and output match uh, impedance, we've worked to uh, 
uh, make the matching circuit for them. And we've used the L uh, section matching circuit for the output, and we get a uh, quality factor 5, which is good. And we've used the uh, pi matching circuit in the input. But why we've used pi? Because we've used L section, but the, at that time we found that the quality factor is it was 0.8, which is very low quality factor. So we've used the pi, which is more flexible, to give the uh, a higher uh, quality factor. So we've got at uh, this time S11, so it was very low, minus 59. And uh, also the S21 is almost to zero in the input and the output. So it, the matching circuit was working perfectly and we used the Smith chart tools of the ADS to design the uh, input and output matching circuits. Uh, after the design finished, we've we, we achieved the uh, we, we've designed it like uh, uh, this is the first stage of the design. We've achieved the design, but there is some problem uh, with it. We've achieved that power. We we get power added efficiency with 72 uh, percent, and uh, the gain 18 dB, which is good and the power output uh, 22 dBm, which is also good, but there was uh, a problem of linearity. Uh, it wasn't as required, uh, because some, some even uh, harmonics, which was reached the, uh, the load, which has to be grounded and uh, sieged, as having been uh, to reach the load. This, uh, so there's something wrong with that uh, design. Uh, because the uh, transmission line, TL, TL9, it wasn't working properly. There was some, some uh, harmonics, even harmonics, like run away from the output of the uh, transistor to the uh, load circuit, to the load. So they're making some linear problem, some distortion for the current uh, wave. So we've put a radial stub to, uh, uh, to enhance the, uh, to prevent this problem because uh, the radial stub is uh, provide a good uh, grounding for the circuit. So it provides a good way for the even harmonics to, uh, for the ground, going to the ground. Uh, the efficiency, uh, the linearity here is increased, but the, unfortunately the efficiency is decreased in this circuit with the radial stop uh, because of the effect of the radial stop, so it's effect on the, of the efficiency. So we've made another alternative circuit. We changed this, that uh, uh, line, that, sorry, yeah. We've changed the uh, transmission line nine with the, with the capacitor, which is the way for the ground. We've changed them from here and put them there. And we found that the circuit worked perfectly. Power added efficiency, the linear was good. Power added efficiency was 75.6, and the power output is 29.5, which is not that much different difference from the first circuit. So, uh, and with good, with uh, good linearity. Uh, the, the gain we've got it, after all, the gain, it was 16 dB, and it was me, uh, constant. As you see here, it's <coughs> constant for all of, uh, from 26 output, uh, 26 dB output power to 28. So that's very good uh, range of uh, output power for the amplifier to work with. So the dynamic range, it's higher. It's very good dynamic range to work with, where with a good uh, gain, 16 dB, which is suitable to work with the GSM systems. 
and you can see here in uh, in this point it's the one db compression point the uh, the uh, again go down drop down to uh, 15 at this point the the one db compression point so you can say it's worked from 16 <coughs> until 29.5 or 29.9 uh, dB of output power. So it's a good range for a good uh, gain. And also, at this 1 dB compression point, we've got the that uh, power added efficiency, which is uh, 75 point something percent, which is it like this. The power added efficiency here, 25 uh, 75 percent uh, on the 1 dB compression point exactly on the uh, at the 1 dB compression point which is 29.9 here so the the amplifier here work work uh, work with the uh, linearity with good linearity so and also we've got the signals of wave uh, the voltage uh, waves which uh, which is we've got it from the harmonics the, the even harmonics those are the, the those are sorry those are the uh, we've got it from the voltage wave no yeah the voltage wave this is the voltage wave it look like uh, uh, that square wave and we've got the We've got it uh, using the odd harmonics here. Those harmonics we've used, we've used uh, until the sixth harmonic to get the uh, voltage wave. And we've got the half sinusoidal uh, current wave, which is come from the uh, odd harmonics, uh, even harmonics, sorry. From even harmonics, those harmonics we've used it to get the current wave. And uh, you can see here a constant gain. That means uh, that the matching circuit is working properly. A constant gain with a wide range of the output power. That means that the uh, matching circuit is working uh, properly. And also the power added efficiency at the one dB compression point. So uh, uh, it was 15. Uh, at 1 dB compression point with gain 15 dB uh, has been achieved. So it was the maximum power added efficiency that we can get, uh, uh, that the amplifier can work with and it's suitable uh, uh, for the DSM system and it's also it was working with suitable linearity. And also we achieved the amplitude to uh, uh, AM to PM uh, distortion amplitude phase distortion of uh, point two uh, point two something uh, degree over dBm and also AM to AM uh, it's point five which is uh, suitable to work with the GSM system and also third uh, order harmonic distortion it was uh, minus forty six which is very good uh, to work with the GSM system uh, according to to this work, we suggest for the future work, uh, uh, we are planning to do some uh, designing using the integrated circuit, which is give us higher efficiency and also uh, uh, small size of the circuit uh, because we can uh, use the our own transistor, we can fabricate our own transistor like using the uh, integrated circuit like uh, the MIMIC monolithic micro integrated circuit that's uh, uh, give us a good chance to to work with the transistor design it itself uh, instead of using a transistor standard one uh, which is give us a limitation to work with like here we've used <coughs> gallium arsenide it's good to work with high frequencies because uh, it has its specification uh, fabrication specification, the, my, the mobility of holes and the mobility of, of electrons is very high. That gives us a good uh, 
uh, that's make the transistor work with high frequency with more efficiency, uh, efficiency and uh, make the transistor work efficiently with high frequencies. So, uh, but we can use the integrated circuit, which is we can make uh, our own transistor, fabricated it, uh, which is suitable to our parameters we, uh, that we want to work with. Fabricated, it. it's going to be uh, we're going to get a uh, higher efficiency and we can work with higher power and it's going to be smaller size. And another thing we can, uh, for the future work, we can use more than one stage. Here we've used one stage of amplifier. We can use more than one, one stage to get a uh, higher output power, high again, because using more than one stage is going to give you high again, of course, and you can get higher power. And thank you for your listening. <laughs>